Hi, good morning folks. If you haven't already guessed, me and Kev are in Kintail and the plan this weekend is to do a bit of a Munro Corbett combo finishing off with a summit camp tonight. So we're doing three hills in total. Just behind me there, I don't know if you can see it, we've got a fork in the path. Got two options. The first one, we can head down to the Falls of Glomac or we turn right and we head up to the Bialik and it's just a bit quicker to get up onto our first Munro Aglas Ven. We could do the, the Falls of Glomac sort of circuit. Uh, I just think it's a big day already as it is so we think we're just going to do the Bialik route instead. I'll have a confab with my colleague in a minute. Adds on a few fair kilometres. It does. It's probably going to be a big big detour, isn't it? Yeah. I know you'll do the Cape Raft next year, eh? so you'll see it then. I'll do it in a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> when I do the Cape Raft trail, yes, yes, I think I will. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so the Falls of Glomac. It adds on, I don't know, about another 11 kilometres to the route, so it's going to add on at least two, two hours minimal. So we've decided just to give it a miss on this occasion. Right, I'm <laughs> going to tentatively walk past these cows. You're alright, fella. There we go. Nice sweat, right? I'm going to jimmy this way. Done. Phew. Now it's Kev's turn to run the cattle gauntlet. I am a wee pals. I'll stay in your way in case you run the heat on I'm going to keep walking because I'm getting midged. I don't think there'll be any shortage of water on this tour but I don't know about you but I can be a bit bad for not drinking enough so uh, just try to get in the habit of drinking little bit often That's us back in the shade so it makes it a bit easier to talk to you because the sun is coming straight down the glen there but anyways just behind me there is Aglas Ven, which is a Munro, and that's the first target. Then we're going to do the Corbett, which is out of view at the moment. Skur Gursik, I think is how you pronounce it. It's a bit of a remote one, it just sits at the back of Glen Athrick. And then we're going to come back on ourselves and do Ben Atto, which is the one on my right here. And then hopefully that's where we'll summit camp. Now, I last did these two Munros uh, back in October 2012 and there was a dusting of snow. Didn't get the views, so at least today it's looking like I should get some really good views. It's getting uh, pretty wild in here, or as Kev puts it, an amphitheatre of rocks and crags and waterfalls. It's not amphitheatre, it's amphitheatre. Theatre. Okay folks, we've got another fork in the path, that dog legs, and takes you to Ben Atto. We, however, are pushing on this way, right past Kev. Up that way. Right, Scaramouche. 
Right, this seems like a good spot to stop for a bite to eat. I'm starving. All right, we've reached the Bialik. We've now got the pull-up eyeglass vein, which is that way behind me there. Right, we've got a 400 meter climb up to eyeglass vein, and we're coming back down this way, obviously. So there's absolutely no point carrying tents and sleeping bags and up. So we're going to lighten the load and stash some of the gear here. Bike feels amazing. Some very, very light scrambling. I might be wrong, but I think I just spied one of those little midge-eating plants. Could do with more of them. Whew. Not far to go now though. I was quite happy, I had a look at the altimeter. And we've got 200 meters of ascent still to do. And then I walked around this corner. <laughs> oh dear, watch this. So yeah, right around this little corner. And there's the summit, it looks miles away. <laughs> ah. <laughs> right. I thought this little bump behind me was the summit. Checked all meter on the watch. 850 meters, so I've got 75 meters to go. Checked the GPS. Eh, nah, no chance. It's got a couple more rises. So many false tops coming up this way. That's the third or fourth, I'm sure. Hurrah, hurrah, we're here. Whew. Yay. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, we have made it, finally. That took uh, nearly four hours. The time is 20 to 12. We left just before eight o'clock this morning. So yeah, <laughs> I can hear Kevin going absolutely mental in the background, screaming and shouting because he came over that false top, seeing me fill her on. I can just hear him. Ah! <laughs> Here he comes now though. Yeah, the views are absolutely fantastic though. You can see right out to the Isle of Skye. I can make out the Sky Bridge. Just in front of me here, I've got the western fringes of the Glen Affric Munros and this tricky little corbett we're doing next. It just sits isolated out on its own. Out to the north, we've got Torridon all laid out in front of us. I can see the hills that me, Kevin and Greg did a few months ago over in um, the Monor Forest, I think it's called. Uh, oh, cheesecake. cheesecake. Cheesecake, that's one, yeah, cheesecake and all that. But yeah, aye, it's looking good. Finally, that was a pain in the ersh. More importantly, Kev, what's the time? We're up o'clock. Get it on. Right, in the Alfresco kitchen today, we have got the standard mackerel wrap on the menu with some tomato puree and some mayonnaise freshly stolen from the Dalwini snack shack from their condiments Okay folks, we're just about to head off fed and watered once again, ready to go so this is where we're going next this little bump is the Corbett and the big beastie behind it it's one of the Glen Affric Munro's Skurnakirfan, I think it's pronounced. And uh, it's quite, I remember that being an awkward Munro to get to. And you usually do it from the youth hostel, the most remote youth hostel in Britain, um, the Alt Beef, I think you pronounce it. And that's just down and around there, taking you into Glen Affric. So there you go. Anyways, we're going to retrace our steps back along that ridge. No point showing you anything on that again, so what I'll do is I shall bring you back when we pick up our camping gear, assuming it's still there. <laughs> See you there. Hello ladies, how's it going and where are you going today? We are going 
A glass fin. A glass fin. Yeah. Nearly you, there, we hope. Are you doing another one as well, or just a single we, tin? Just a single. We did that one in March. Did that in March, On right. another crack on in a, day. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Like glorious weather. It's been so lucky this And are you week. heading home tonight, or are you...? No. No. Nah. We're going to Kinloch. Kinloch? Kintail Lodge for dinner. We got a cheeky few tonight. We were there last night. We had a pint. It was good. A wee few beers. Yeah. Uh, but we're staying in a wee shepherd's hut. It's very yeah. romantic. It is, it, darling. <laughs> romantic. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> is that at the back of the hotel? No. Uh, it's actually on the Morbeh Loop. Not far mm -hmm. in Tail's End. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's good. We'll let you guys push on and Thank enjoy you. the rest of your day. Uh, we're, we're, having a, you. we're having a pasty at the top, we're not having a wrap. No macro wraps. No macro, no macro wraps. Wraps. Oh, well. It was lovely to meet you. So yeah, nice chatting. Nice to meet you too. See you later. Thank you. Enjoy your day. All right, folks. That's us back at our uh, gear that we stashed earlier. Let's see if it's still there. Yeah, still there. <laughs> I tell you what, the uh, the two girls we met earlier on there, one of them recognised both Kevin and I from the videos. And I had a laugh and a joke about the macro wraps and all that. And apparently her husband watches us, so uh, I better give him a shout out to uh, Doogie. How's it going, mate? Nice to meet your partner and her friend. That's pretty random for somewhere so remote. All right, that's us reached the shores of the loch. And we are down at 380 metres. And we've got another 400 metres to pull up to this corbit here, right behind me. So, it is quarter past two. I think we should be at the summit. Say about four? So, that gives us four hours of daylight to play with. And coming back over here and doing Ben Atto, or Ben Fada, it's actually pronounced Atto, I believe according to the sign back down at the start. Uh, anyway, I digress. We probably would have enough daylight to do it, but we would knock our pans in. So, two choices. First choice is to just do the corbett, camp there, have a nice leisurely camp, enjoy the evening, or knock our pans in and camp up here somewhere on Ben Atto. So, uh, I think we're going to plump for the corbett. Here's Bob Ag. Get across the bog. Oops. Go for the boulders, mate. Stepping stones. Oh! Oh, oh nearly, nearly shattered. That's why I've got gators. Well, that's uh, 25 to 3 now, and we are at the base of the Corbett. I don't think we'll be. Too long in getting up there. Doesn't look too steep. A couple of little ramps. But yeah, the path was really good. It's National Trust land this. Well, we're just about to head off National Trust land. They don't own the Corbett, just the Munros. But uh, they've done a good job of the path. Where there's boggy sections, there's nicely placed boulders to skip over. And uh, Kevin will just demonstrate in a minute when he catches up. Boggy McBog don't face. jump in the bog. I was actually concerned that this would be a wee bit hemmed in for the views. But to be honest, the views are fantastic. Yeah, okay, I'm not going to get much behind me to the east because you've got a big, massive Munro there. But out to the west and the north, it's actually ding dong, or superbos, I should say. So there you go, current scenes. The tent of choice this weekend is the Scarp Ferry. Um, three nights I've had in that Aldi tent, I've had enough of it. So back in the Scarp, and the insects are also out getting absolutely harassed by the what do you call them? The Nick Cleggs. So I managed to find 
a little pitch here, I think I'll just manage to fit it in. Sunset is out to the west obviously, got a grandstand view, it's going to sink below the Munro we're on earlier today, uh, so that's to be at 8 o'clock tonight. So, uh, three hours to go, so no rush. <laughs> but I am hungry, so I'm looking forward to getting dinner on the go as well. See the sleeve for the centre pole? It could definitely be better. It's just so tight. And the little pockets here, I just don't think they're substantial enough. it has got visions of it popping out. In fact, sometimes when you're putting the tent up, it does pop out. You'll see what I mean here. That's the tiny little pocket that holds it in. I mean, obviously it works, but I just think that would have been a bit more substantial. But hey ho, that's my gripe. Typical mountain pitch. Sometimes the peg goes right in, other times right into a rock. There's one thing I forgot to tell you guys. When I was out camping with Greg earlier this year in winter, it was a sharp exit in the morning because obviously the wind was picking up, touching and breaching 30 miles per hour. So what happened was when I was shaking the excess water and frost off the tent, one of those little carbon rods in the corner came out, never noticed. It wasn't until I was airing out the tent back home I noticed there was a rod short. So what I ended up having to do was order one direct from Tap Tent. It's like $2.50, no hassle. $50 postage. Ah! So I ended up buying that beanie hat you've seen me on. But uh, it cost me like, what about £60 once it was uh, converted into uh, sterling? So it was an expensive lesson. That's looking good, just a wee bit of tightening up here and there. I have to say Kev, that is the tightest I've ever seen your tent. It is tight like a tiger. That'll give the Egyptian pyramids off. Giza are run for their money, eh? Yeah. Tutankhamun come in, we'll be quaking in his boots. I love, a, I love a pyramid shaped tent. I just think they just do so well in the wind. I think you should do a review on this. I think people would really appreciate it. I know they're more scarce now, but if you want Kevin to do a review, leave a comment in the yes. comment section below and say, Kev, give us a review. There's a ked on it, like, no ked, a cled. I could do it in my garden with my furry family or I'll just do it in a wild camp, probably in a wild camp. Do it in a wild camp, mate. Yes, I think I should. Happy days, that is the water just boiled. Ah, oh, bloody, loads of them, really annoying. Bring on spring. Summer and winter, no thank you. Winter's too cold and dark, and summer is too bloody bitey. One of my YouTuber friends, Kerry from Drunken Wonderlust, she contacted me a couple of weeks ago and asked if I would uh, promote her new business venture. And I said, yeah, of course, that's fine. It's called Officially Smashed It, and she makes these little commemorative medals for outdoor achievements. Could be the Cape Raft Trail, West Highland Way, the Monroes, the Wainwrights, the Penning Way, whatever it is, Three Peaks Challenge, you get the drift. She makes these little wooden sustainable medals just as a little memento to keep. So this one here is Quiche Du, which is my last Monroe that I did back in 2014, which is ironically just over there as well. So yeah, if it's something you think you'd like, uh, check out Kerry's website and you can have a look and you can get in contact with her if you want something a little bit more personalised. And it also comes with a, a fridge magnet on the back as well. So yeah, there you go. Oh, boiling away while I was talking to Kevin. Had my starter and this is the main well, there she goes, five minutes away to sunset. Just going to sneak behind the east shoulder of a glass vein. Well, the sun has set. 
the temperature has dropped, the midges have GT'd, so that's not too bad. But anyways, I think I'm going to retire to the tent. I've got a cheeky Horlicks waiting for me. I'm going to just dive into my quilt, have my Horlicks. Super boss. <laughs> Good morning campers, it is 10 to 7, I'm literally just waiting for the sun to poke its head above right about here. Right, that's the water on the boil. Time to pack up while I'm waiting on that. See, this is why I prefer camping to bivvying because I just spread all my gear out in my messy camper that way. Here we have Kevin modeling the Lanshan 1.5. Strike a pause. There's blue steel right there. My wings are like a shield of steel. What's that, a bat think? <laughs> <laughs> Just before taking the tent down, I'm probably teaching a granny to suck eggs here, but I'll loosen everything off first. So when I put the tent up the next time, everything's ready, rather than just pulling out the pegs and then putting all away. So all the guy lines are loosened off, ready to roll. So now I can just drop the tent. At least that ridge will be sheltered through the wind. Finally, that's us on the go. I think Kevin was getting a bit impatient. His time was a good 20 minutes down before mine. Anyways, we have uh, picked up that line of fence post again. We'll pick our way off this corbett and get ourselves down to that lock. And we've still got this Monroe to do. Ben Atto, or Ben Fada. So uh, what I'll do is I'll pick my way down and I'll bring you back at the lock. Hey, that's us back down at the bottom. Took us 40 minutes to get down off that one. Now, this is our ridge here. And this takes us directly onto the summit. So um, we're down at 380 meters. What's the height of that one? Is it 1042 or 1142? It's 10, 1042, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, so. Uh, at least 600 metres of ascent, but it's at least the ridge, boom, tops out, bang on the summit, so that's good. Fada. Oh, 
From summit camp to summit top of Ben Fada, that took us two and a half hours, pretty much bang on. Happy days. And this is our route back out. I always feel this mountain's a bit neglected compared to the main ones over in Kintail. It's a bit dull when you look at it from the south, but from the north side, it's quite complex. Lots of big quarries, connecting spurs, and uh, aye, this side, the north side's far more interesting. So you've got the ridge we just came up. If I just pan around, look at all this. It's pretty impressive. So this here, there's a route off the mountain. I'm not sure if the camera can pick it out, but you can maybe just make out the zigzags. But first, we're going to dump the packs and we're just going to zip up and do, there's a Munro top here you can add on if you wish. Right, that's us reached the Munro top. It was literally 10 minutes if you were lucky. But anyways, what we've done is we've just dropped in a little bit just to show you the alternative route you can do. It's a really nice ridge walk just behind me here. Some easy scrambling, but nothing too difficult. But uh, not in a huge rush, but we're just going to take that easier route, pick up the packs and down the stalker's path. But this looks really interesting. This is quite funny, there's a little sort of ridge here and it just sort of stops and I've dared Kev to go out and get his foot on it Okay, that's us reached the top of the zigzags Now it's a long way down Alright folks, that's us back on the path we started on yesterday morning, so I'm going to leave you a little video here you might like to watch, otherwise I'm going to sign out and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!